Yes, we're back at this again, but I think with good reason. Um, so I thought personally that the previous experiment on, uh, what was it, part three, I guess, was conclusive, but uh, we have a lot of valid objections. I don't think they're sound objections, but there are some valid objections, meaning that uh, there is some logic and reasoning that if the premises that the people are presenting are true, it would indeed invalidate my previous experiment, and I have not proven or shown that those concerns are eliminated. So um, what we're going to do in this video is a different idea. I have an idea for a kind of end-all experiment that'll just make everybody happy, kind of like I thought the last one would. But what I'm going to do is I'll talk about a new experiment that I'm going to design outside of the car, recreating a model of the exhaust where we can induce and control different variables. And I think this will address uh, the main concerns. I want to bring up the top three concerns, which I agree. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that they're sound concerns again, but, but I agree they are valid concerns. And we'll talk about what those are so people understand a little bit. And uh, then um, I, I also want to introduce a kind of interesting new thing that somebody brought up that uh, might actually support the experiment before, and we'll get into that. So that's kind of the goal here. So, um, And I know I want to get back to the car diagnosis videos and everything, so I think I'm going to make this sort of a secondary priority, and we'll get around to doing this experiment hopefully within a month, but I, I don't want to make this channel all about O2 sensor analysis and stuff, but uh, get back to to kind of our thing and this will be off to the periphery because honestly I think we're losing a lot of people with this that aren't following along anyway. But um, anyway, so the three main concerns, the first one and the most important one um, that I agree needs to be addressed to really make this conclusive and that is of course um, the whole principle of this is we have our exhaust gas or a gas whatever and then we of course dilute that gas with another one, um, in the in our case an inert one, but it actually doesn't matter in this particular example. And the thing is, is that there is a vast difference if you do that in a closed environment because the pressures exerted from the gases will make it such that if you do a sampling of the gas with your sensor, the introduction of your dilution, um, your diluent gas, will not change the reading on the sensor. And this I, I don't argue with. What I argue is that in an exhaust, with this stuff going through at a high rate of speed, and then also with my introducing my diluent into that stream, I, I just don't see this as a, as a closed system. And I just disagree with that, but a lot of people are saying that it still counts as a closed system and uh, the partial pressures of the gas, which I won't go into too much, um, are causing, this is the reason why when I added my argon, we did not see a change, is because the exhaust counts as a sealed system. Um, the experiment that I'm designing will rebut that, and then also uh, I've got some other evidence that kind of rebuts it. The second excuse, uh, well, I shouldn't say excuse, the second reasoning is, um, obviously it goes without saying if you think about it, this presents a problem for the O2 sensor is an O2 sensor crowd in that the introduction of more hydrocarbon, how would that cause the system to go rich? Because that is no different. If the exhaust is a closed system, you introduce the hydrocarbon, well then how come that makes a change, but an inert gas doesn't because of the partial pressure thing? And the explanation for that is because the exhaust is so hot and you have the presence of the reactive hydrocarbon, it actually consumes the, the oxygen. So the rich condition is not from the displacement or the dilution of oxygen in the exhaust, it is from the actual consumption of the oxygen in the exhaust. Um, again, I've got a rebuttal for that that I'll show later that somebody sort of inadvertently brought up. And then also the experiment that I designed will basically compensate for that because it's going to be done at room temperature. 
And then there's a third objection, which I agree with, and that is that my analogy I used in explaining dilution and concentration and uh, things like that, um, the oxygen sensor is not like an eyedropper that you suck up a sample. And I agree with that. I wasn't saying that's how it works. That was just to help people that were struggling with the idea of dilution and concentration and uh, diluents and things. So I, I agree with that part, but it won't matter. But anyway, here's the strategy. My strategy is, this time in this video, rather than design and execute the experiment, I'm going to present the experimental design. Then, the people that would have objections to the design can present their objections in the comments before I do the experiment. That way, when I finally do the experiment, we've got any objections and everything settled out. People will be able to address any variables I overlooked, and most importantly, any controls I overlooked. They may object that my design will settle with this sealed system versus open system. But let me show you what the experimental design is, and then that's kind of the strategy here. So this model that I'll make uh, outside of the car is going to basically represent the exhaust and we'll have an oxygen sensor and I'll have three tubes that I can enter in various individual gases or mixtures of gases and things like that. And then of course we have our, what I believe to be an open system, but we can always of course repeat any experiments and put a cork uh, in here and seal that system so that we have a closed system just to show that there is a difference with a exhaust and a closed system which I believe we are going to find if we don't then I agree then everybody uh, was right about the effects of the, the partial pressure explaining the results last time but I don't think that this is in any way remotely resemblant of a closed system but the idea is I'm going to have a heated oxygen sensor. My one concern is that maybe the heat from the oxygen sensor heater alone may not be enough to get the oxygen sensor to have enough activity to do the measurements. We'll have to see. Um, the other thing is that the other wires from the oxygen sensor, of course, will go off to the DVOM. Um, boy, a scope would come in pretty handy at this point, I guess, for sure. But we'll be able to sense what the oxygen sensor reads if we get enough heat. Um, we'll have a little bit of metal uh, around here so that any heat generated from the oxygen sensor wouldn't melt the flimsy plastic or material. And so that's kind of the design of it. And then hopefully you can see that now I can introduce all kinds of variables and we can control them and see what we get. So one of the first things that I'm interested in doing, um, and also because when I say O2, I plan on using room air for everything, but I do want to do one experiment with just oxygen. So we don't want any propane or anything, you know, any fuel source in there. Um, so what I want to do is create a closed system um, by, by just plugging this with a cork here and then filling 100% O2 and then, of course, igniting the, the sensor just for safety to make sure we have a 100% O2 environment in there first and just see what that O2 sensor reads. Um, I, I remember there was a, a, I think his name was Tobias Johnson that brought up that he was saying in the 100% O2, we might see negative voltage. I kind of disagreed, thought we would see zero voltage. Um, in retrospect, though, I, I actually take that back. I apologize. I, I think he actually might be right. Um, given the Nernst principle, which we'll go into a little bit in the next video, having a higher concentration of oxygen here rather than here, which is reverse of what normally happens, I, I guess maybe it is actually possible we would see a uh, the difference in potential reversed and we would see a negative voltage. I don't know, I'm just curious, but it really has nothing to do with the actual experiment, but this design will allow us to do stuff like that. We also, of course, can see what happens in a 100% propane environment. Do we go full rich or does it not read any voltage because there's no oxygen to create a potential? Um, we'll be able to do those little curiosity things, but obviously the main experiment we wanna do would be to get our influx of oxygen in there. And of course, we will see the O2 sensor go lean. No, no question in my mind about that. But then when we introduce propane, we should see a change and we should see the oxygen sensor going rich. If it does not, then I am going to fully agree that we have a sealed system in, in this 
design and also in a car, in a car design. I would totally agree. Invalidates everything I did before. Totally agree. If, however, we see this go rich, well, then that is evidence that we do not have sealed system. And basically, that experiment alone, as far as I'm concerned, validates everything I've done before. We're done. It's over. I would hope that people would agree with this. I'm sure they won't. But um, anyway, that's part of the design. But then we can do other things, too. For example, um, is hydrocarbon necessary for this reaction? Well, of course, instead of diluting the oxygen flow with propane, uh, we will be able to do the, obviously, the experiment kind of like we did before, introducing argon, seeing if we get an equal decrease um, in the oxygen content, an increased voltage with equal amount of argon versus propane. Uh, we could even recreate the experiment we did earlier. I could put both O2 and propane in and see if I can get the sensor to balance at 0.45 volts and then introduce the argon at that point and verify that we get no change again, um, indicating that we are measuring proportion of O2 to propane. So you can see that there's all kinds of cool things we could do. Uh, we could reverse the experiment, put propane in, and then oxygen, see if we decrease the voltage, uh, put propane in, and then argon, see if we get an equal decrease in the voltage. So basically, we can do all these variables that we can't do with a car. Um, as a matter of fact, there's no reason we couldn't put car exhaust through there, I guess. We can repeat all of these with the open and closed, closed system. So I think that'll work out really well. So what I'm asking from you guys is if you're following along, and especially you guys that are familiar with the partial pressure laws, and that was one of your main concerns. What your concerns would be with this experiment, what design considerations I would need to make to appease your objections with the previous experiment with the car. And I'm, I'm hoping that we'll only get comments from people that are following along with that. I really don't want to dilute it with nonsense. Ha! <laughs> dilute it. Um, but I'm getting, like, everybody's pasting links from Wikipedia and links from there and links from here that, that they aren't even reading. Um, so it's getting a little frustrating, but one of them actually was a little helpful. Um, there was one that uh, somebody had sent, I can't remember who, but he had sent a link that basically ended the argument. Just ended the argument. And this would be a new technology from NGK. It is an intake manifold oxygen sensor. And obviously his argument is, well, if I'm right that hydrocarbons are necessary for the oxygen sensor operation, how could it possibly work that you would have an intake manifold oxygen sensor? It is a traditional zirconia oxygen sensor just like we're discussing here in the intake manifold and I would absolutely agree with that but had the guy just read the article that he sent me he would have seen that that oxygen sensor is for the purpose of detecting EGR when the EGR solenoid opens and lets EGR into the intake that is the purpose of the sensor so it can measure the EGR and accurately position the EGR sensor um, so, you know, like stuff like that. But the thing is, is that if you think about this, think about this, and I'll put a link to this thing in the description. It doesn't give a whole lot of information, but it's a traditional oxygen sensor located in the intake. And it has a diagram of this. And with the diagram, of course, you've got your exhaust here with an EGR tube and your EGR valve here. And the EGR flow comes in when the EGR is commanded. And the purpose of this oxygen sensor is to accurately detect the EGR gas so that it can accurately position the sensor for optimal performance. Now, let's think about this. First of all, this system has to work through the diffusion of oxygen. And then the EGR gas, let's put as red. So it has to work through the diffusion of oxygen because, first of all, since the intake is at ambient temperature, well, a little bit higher, but certainly not at like 700 degrees, this cannot be because of the consumption of oxygen from the hydrocarbons because that EGR gas already cooled off a bit as it is, but once it enters the intake, it is not 
a 700 or 900 degree environment where it is consuming the oxygen. So the oxygen consumption for richness has to be dismissed because this has to be through diffusion. There's no other explanation. And the other thing is if this isn't as much, if not more, of a closed system than an exhaust is, I would argue the exhaust system is far more of an open system than introducing gas into the intake. So again, it clearly can measure through the diffusion of the oxygen molecules. I don't see any other way that would work. Interested in your guys' take on this um, in the comments as well, because I see this sensor, even though the guy didn't understand what he was trying to prove, um, inadvertently, he kind of supported my theory, I believe, as opposed to refuted it through this evidence. But I'll put a link to the description and see what you guys think, but I do believe that it basically is a counter to the oxygen being consumed by the hydrocarbons. It's at too low of a temperature, and I believe that it also presents the possibility that the intake is an open system. It's really no different with air coming in and then going out through the exhaust valves. It's really no different than an exhaust. So um, how is this change in the oxygen sensor occurring with this guy? So anyway, that is the design. Looking forward to your comments. And again, it may take a month before I get around to doing this. I've got a lot of travel for work. I want to fit in some more typical diagnostic uh, case studies and things. But you know, I do want to get this thing done correctly and put an end to this thing once and for all. So looking forward to the comments and thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And uh, we'll see what happens.